I moved from Atlanta to Chicago right at the transition between my 20s and my 30s. Right after my grandfather in Ohio, then my grandfather in Chicago, both passed away in the span of 10 days. I stood in front of the congregation at Zion Lutheran Church in my hometown of Fairport Harbor, Ohio. I shared how my bapa, Finnish for grandpa, loved to sing dirty sailor songs for his nurses. I shared how he would do push-ups on two fingers late into his 80s. I shared how he would always say, that's my girl, every time I would cause a little bit of trouble. I also shared how he'd also cause a little bit of trouble himself by pretending he couldn't hear mama. And when, he, and when she would come find him uh, and get his attention, he'd fake turn his hearing aid on to make his trick more convincing. I recently found a decaying blue shoebox full of clipped obituaries, including one for my bapa. I painstakingly reviewed each of the hundreds of lives buried in this slightly morbid collection. Ultimately, I found little more than previous addresses, employers, general statements that they would be missed, and survivors who likely had their own paper clipping in that box. I seriously hope that my own obituary might read a little more lively than all of these that I had just reviewed. I think at least one curse word would do the trick. It was shortly after that eulogy that my parents took me aside and told me, don't worry, but dad has cancer. When I stood in front of that church next, it was to give a eulogy for my father. I shared how, as a teenager, he snuck out of the house when he was sick because he wanted to go to school. I shared how I was completely convinced that they wrote the show MacGyver based on him after I witnessed him fi fixing a failing hard drive with a paper clip and a rubber band. I shared how he was always the first person to come to the rescue of an agitated stranger and that he actually had no ability to recognize somebody as a stranger. I shared how everyone called him dad and when my tiny 42-person class of 1998 walked across stage at graduation, every single person gave him a hug because it would have been weird not to hug Fred. I had written obituaries before, and I delivered many eulogies. However, it was getting harder and harder to deliver. I was listed in these obituaries as a survivor, and it was definitely not the way that I would have chosen to be featured in a newspaper. And what's with survivors anyway? For me, don't list survivors unless someone is directly involved in my death, like a serial killer or a shark. Actually, in my obituary, please put the shark survived. After my father passed away, it took my surviving family, my mom, my mama, my brother Eric, and my nephew Caleb, two years to honor my father's wishes and travel as a family to Finland to spread his ashes. I was able to add a long layover in Paris to my mama's delight. We fulfilled two of her biggest travel wishes, see the Mona Lisa in person, and go to the top of the Eiffel Tower. When we landed back in Chicago, my 88-year-old mama joked that my third-story Chicago walk-up was nothing to her since she had made it up that Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Everyone got a good rest, and my nephew Caleb stayed with me in Chicago while my mom, my mama, and my brother started their drive back to Ohio. It was 10.30 that night when my brother called me as he was lying on the side of the road to tell me that the car had flipped three times. He couldn't get to our mom and mama, but he was sure that they were dead. From there, it was a whirlwind of hospitals in our childhood home 
and a joint funeral, and they were gone. Like that, my brother and I were orphaned. I found myself in the front pew of that same church. No words came to me when I was asked to present a eulogy. If I was able to gather words, I could imagine that I would have told of my mother's amazing ability to be a complete badass while sprinkling magic in everything that she did. She was a competitive sharpshooter. She rode motorcycles and worked on classic cars with me. She also created some of the most memorable childhood items for me, like dragon meat when I didn't want to eat pork chops, <laughs> or showing me that hot dogs were actually delicious spiders if you cut them the long way. She expertly crafted every strange Halloween costume that I requested, including a box of McDonald's fries in which I had to lie flat in the back of our station wagon to get to school. <laughs> One of my favorite memories was a time I was causing a scene because she wouldn't get me the cereal that I wanted. She threw herself to the floor of the cereal aisle in our grocery store and flailed her arms and legs as she screamed. When this full-grown adult had concluded her tantrum, she crouched down to my level and calmly said, next time, you got to commit. Make it really believable. I still, to this day, gauge the value of something I feel I should fight for by imagining if I'd be willing to go to the ground for it. My mama was the strongest and wildest woman I have ever known. She grew up riding logs down a river to a sawmill and raising horses on the family farm in Finland and then living in Harlem before settling in Ohio. She liked to help people find the ways that they were special. And you could always count on her to join if you were up to a little bit of mischief. She loved telling a story about us arriving late to a Mother's Day banquet and being seated with all the older proper Finnish ladies. At the end of the event, one of the ladies abruptly asked me, Jessica, do you know any Finnish? Of course I did. So I said the first thing that came to mind, Olet himisten haida. They gasped and my mama quickly ushered me out. The phrase is a kind of scolding that roughly translates to, I better act like a human being. <laughs> when we were in the car, my mama laughed harder than I had ever heard her laugh. And she said, good, everyone needs their feathers ruffled once in a while. Yeah. I've gained so much from the people that I've lost. I've had many more th uh, things I've said many more things that have flustered old ladies and had a really good laugh about it. I've made over-the-top costumes for my pets, and I still call the humidifier a magic feel-better machine. I've snuck out of the house as a teen when I was sick because I wanted to go to school. I found joy in restoring cars, gut rehabbing my home, and doing little projects to help a friend. I've never met a stranger. And I've certainly faked not hearing someone and maneuvered out of it with a smile. In a year, I will survive the transition from my 30s to my 40s. I know one day, hopefully not very soon, someone will stand in the front of a church and tell hilarious stories I would never expect to ever be told especially in a house of God. <laughs> and my obituary will color a page of some electronic source. Until then, I am a survivor. <laughs>